What is up you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Layla, and on my channel I discuss everything about healing, topical steroid withdrawal, steroid addiction, and eczema, and any other skin inflammatory condition. This is the channel to be watching. On today's video I really want to do a review about the latest documentary that's been released, Skin on Fire. And I am so happy that this has finally come out. It's been long overdue. I think the last documentary that was made about topical steroid withdrawal and raising awareness was by Brianna Bandos and she actually brought this out in 2019 and this is actually when I first discovered that I was actually suffering from a steroid addiction and I needed to go into withdrawal and heal my skin naturally completely from the inside out. First and foremost I just want to say I am so pleased that people are out there in the TSW community raising awareness about this condition and the danger of topical steroids. But I just was very grateful for the fact that Dr. Repertoire had actually made this brilliant effort and put this brilliant film together to help raise awareness to lots of lots of people in the world who are using steroids on a daily basis, unaware of the implications and the addiction that they can cause to our skin and the detrimental debilitating effect it can have withdrawing. If you've clicked on my video today, then you're probably either trying to withdraw from steroids yourself or under some sort of steroid use for your skin condition and you're wondering what the long-term implications may be and you're trying to gain further knowledge about the use of steroids and the dangers of steroids or you're a caregiver, parent or partner who is just trying to try and monitor the use of steroids for your loved ones, for your, the person that you're caring in order to not create any further damage or you might already be in the thick of your TSW or steroid addiction and wondering how long this is going to take and if you are the only person out there. Um, and rest assured that you really are not the only person out there with this condition. There are many, many of us and you can go ahead and look at lots of my other videos about how I overcame my topical steroid withdrawal, how I manage my eczema still and my skin condition, what I do to do that and how I do it completely naturally. So at the beginning of the doc documentary there's an animation about how a small child or a baby can get a rash and then they go to the doctors and they find that they've been offered topical steroids in order to overcome the rash and I think a lot of us are very very familiar with this scenario certainly when I was a baby my parents would take me to the dermatologist and doctor and they would just I would be given steroid upon steroid and this was always a very mild steroid it was a point 0.5% hydrocortisone but this is the start of I think most people's stories when it comes to going to the doctors with some sort of rash uh, it could be possibly eczema or it could be an allergen to something and it's one of the things that obviously medical practitioners have very much overlooked in the medical community that they don't realize that we need to get to the root cause of these rashes and not just put a band-aid on it by putting steroids and understanding the harmful implications of giving steroids especially to young ones and babies at such a young age and whereby their addiction can be far faster than an adult's. However, the documentary does sort of portray that a lot of dermatologists don't really give any warnings to patients when they're prescribed with steroid creams, but often it is literally just one tube that they're prescribed with and unknown to them that this can cause long-term steroid addiction. Apparently it can be as little as two weeks of steroid use on a very mild cortisone that can actually attribute to steroid addiction. So I have to say I was rather shocked when I heard this um, at the beginning of this documentary. I found it quite um, shocking news that it would take as little as that length of time to become addicted to steroids. So the first doctor that speaks in this documentary as well, he actually explains how wonderful steroids are and how effective they are for rashes and saying that the only side effects is really thinning of the skin and it's the thinning of the skin that dilates the blood vessels when you stop using the topical steroid, which then creates the rash, which in my mind is actually not quite accurate because the thinning of the skin is not really what's expanding the blood vessels. It's the, with, with, it's the addiction that the skin has that creates those blood vessels to expand, causing that redness. So I found that a little bit contrary the second dermatologist, I think, believe her name is Sarah Hogan, she talks about misuse of steroid creams and how patients are misusing them and that's what's causing the steroid addiction, which again, I don't really feel is 
appropriate or true because in actual fact we, we're prescribed with a tube of cream and we go home and we're just told to put it on you know morning and evening every day until the tube is finished or until the rash has gone away so obviously if we're applying the steroids to our, our skin until the rash goes away and then we have a few days where it's clear and then the skin starts to want more because we're seeing more red rashes and further all over our body then of course we're going to apply the steroid there, there to those parts so it's not really the patient misusing the steroid it's the doctor not really giving stri strict instructions or a strict protocol as to how to use the steroid and it should be said to them to the patient at the beginning of their appointment or when they're being prescribed the steroid that if the rash comes back to no longer use the cream as a patient, you think that you should just apply more because that's what you've been told to do by your medical practitioner. So it, a lot of it was, you know, mistruths really, and I think they're just trying to sort of get away with what they can. The documentary then goes on to interview two other doctors um, who sit next to each other, and they're Luke Maxfield and Munbi Shan. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right, but um, these two guys again we're sort of uh, reinforcing the fact that if that steroids are very effective and they can, are quite potent and addiction can and is a real effect but it's all about the fact that the patient has misused them and they even went on to talk about oral steroids and how oral steroids can cause terrible terrible withdrawal effects but at the same time um, they still reinforce the, the greater use of them and the good use of them, but again saying that it's the patient that's misusing them. So maybe what it comes down to is that the doctors aren't really explaining you know, how these steroids need to be taken in the first place if they really believe that they are effective in the long term. And it's really all about the long term healing here. Then Dr. Rappaport tells us a little bit about the history of steroids and how much stronger they've become over the years and that how back in the 1950s when topical steroids came out as some sort of miracle wonder cream, they developed stronger and stronger steroids. And then at the same time, the population grew greater with those that had eczema and other skin inflammatory conditions that needed those steroids. So as you can see, there's a bit of a trend here. The stronger the steroids, the more eczema patients there were in society. He also mentioned that in the 60s and 70s when he saw eczema patients, the eczema was not half as severe as he sees today and he never saw that underlying redness that we all typically know very well going through topical steroid withdrawal. Dr. Rappaport mentions how he sees the difference in the skin of an eczema and psoriasis patient to that of somebody who is going through topical steroid addiction. And he said that their skin would look exactly the same. You wouldn't see psoriasis plaques or eczema patches, you would just see this red burning skin. And that's when he identified with steroid addiction. He mentions, and I think this is so crucial and important, that he said the diagnosis doesn't change, it's the treatment that must change. Dr. Rappaport mentions that there are drugs, there are drugs for the burning, he's got drugs for the itching, he's got drugs for the sleeping, but what are those drugs? And if he's got drugs to recover from steroid addiction, is he talking immune suppressants and protopics like a lot of other medical practitioners do as well? It was something that I was offered when I was in the crux of my TSW. I was offered cyclosporin and they wanted to put me on cyclosporin like straight away without even a second thought for it. And I went home and I really did some good soul searching and some good thinking and I was just thinking to myself, if I've got addiction to one drug, will I be addicted to another? And this is something that I think we all need to ask ourselves. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think about immune suppressants, protopics, if you've taken them, have you had worse side effects than you have with steroids? Let me know your thoughts, I'd really like to hear them. This doctor really annoyed me, this Sarah Hogan, because she was talking about how you know, patients come into her office and they're red head to toe and obviously they're very emotional and they're, very, they're explaining how they're debilitated and they can't live their lives. And she's taking this all on board, but in return, she's just basically telling them that, yes, you've got bad skin and I'm terribly sorry you're in this situation, but you need to take steroids in order to recover. One thing that really annoyed me as well was that one of the patients said on camera that he was prescribed a year's worth of very strong, potent topical steroids and he was to go home with a year's supply. And I think that is just mismanagement completely from the doctor who prescribed that cream to him to give him a year's supply. Then we come on to the chapter whereby the patients are going through their withdrawal and the very, very disturbing 
reports as to what they went through with their withdrawal and I know many of you out there might be actually going through the thick of your withdrawal process right now and feeling rather hopeless and debilitated and feel like your life's been taken away from you and this mother of this child who said on the documentary how she felt that she kept doubting herself, thinking why is she doing the right thing by withdrawing the steroids from the child because they simply just weren't working anymore. And most other patients also um, said this. And that was also my personal experience as well. My, I knew that I had to stop the steroid use because I knew that I was addicted to this cream because this redness just wouldn't go away whether I put the steroids on or not. It just wasn't going away. The mother of this small child, her child was misdiagnosed. Her child had a skin infection and then she was given some topical steroids just for these very tiny, tiny minuscule little dots that were on her wrist to get rid of that she was told to apply the cream to. And at no certain point was she told about any side effects of topical steroids. I get quite annoyed a lot of these patients, just like how we went through, is that you search online, you know, and how many doctors tell you, oh, don't be Googling this, don't be Googling that, the stupid internet, you know. But if it wasn't for people creating these communities, such as ITSAN, we wouldn't know where we are. And I just get so enraged that we entrust in the medical community to look after us and get us better when we're sick. I was truly astonished to hear from Dr. Rappaport how he had to take almost two to three hundred children out of school so that they could focus on their healing and recovery as well as number of adults to actually have to no longer go to work and he's had to you know written people off with a disability in order to get some sort of support from the local government in order to be able to survive going through withdrawal but with not having a job to go to. At the very end of the video, a couple of the patients, whereby the documentary got very, very emotional, they actually compared TSW to cancer and how with those that have cancer and those that understand cancer, it's widely acknowledged, cancer is a very debilitating, um, extremely emotional disease, but that at the same time, TSW is almost on parallels with cancer when it comes to the disability and what we have to go through in order to try and overcome it and recover. And then finally, they talk about suicide and I believe that this actual documentary was dedicated to somebody who um, did commit suicide due to going through topical steroid withdrawal which was extremely you know hard to hear because thoughts like that did run through my mind as well when I was going through topical steroid withdrawal and I'm sure I'm not alone and this one particular patient said he had a gun in his house and he actually contemplated you know finding out what was on the other side for him Thank God he didn't pull that trigger. And thank God he recovered from TSW. And I think there is a silver lining for us all. And that is to really, you know, whenever we're in a dark space and a dark time, to remember that we do have one another on social media. And we there are these documentaries out there that are bringing us together and all join as a community because I truly believe that in numbers we will overcome this condition. So I'm going to put the link down below for, for the Skin on Fire documentary and at the same time I'm also going to put a link down to the podcast that Alice Hart has and it's a TSW podcast that he, she has and she actually had an interview with Dr. Rappaport following the documentary which I think is really really worth while listening to if you're interested in hearing more from Dr. Rappaport and I think we're extremely lucky to have him in our community and that said talking of community do reach out to Itsan again I'll put them in the description below if you want to learn more about topical steroid withdrawal and of course join my community if you will. I particularly raise awareness about how I healed and my journey so that you guys can um, delve in on some of those tips and tricks and they might work for you as well. At the same time don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give me a big thumbs up for this video if you got some value out of it and I'll see you guys next week. Bye for now. Oh, this is hard. <sighs> Get it together.